I was born in Kurunagal and my first year of school was in Kurunagal St. Anne's College and from grade 2 I went to Trinity College Kandy and uh, I was very good at studies in school and my mother's only wish was for me to become a doctor. So I used to have a lot of arguments with her because I said, why should I become a doctor? And she said, the only reason is because you can save people. I said, is it only a doctor who can save people? But I didn't want to argue with her because she was my best friend and she was the one who gave me the best advice in life. Still, she is my best friend. And uh, so I was hoping and I wanted to fulfill her dream to become a doctor. But I had this great love and passion for motorcycles and cars and uh, I could drive and ride when I was about seven and eight. Every time I come from the school boarding, I had to sneak out the cars with the servants and drive with my, without my father's knowledge. And um, at the age of 14, I saw this Hollywood movie, Silver Dream Racing. So, the day I saw this movie, I, was, I just thought to myself, what am I doing? Becoming doctor, is it my mother's dream or is it my dream? And after watching this movie, it was about a rider struggling his life to become a champion and he meets with an accident and he kills himself. So I thought that's not a good story, that's not where I should stop. So I thought he should go on and have to more wins and winning more champions. So I thought I should become a world champion. So from that day onwards, so my room was full of posters of motorcycle racing and I thought to myself, I'm going to fulfill, fulfill my dream, uh, not my mother's dream. So I took that decision when I was 14 that I'm going to become a world champion. And at the age of 16, uh, with the motorcycle that my grandmother bought for me for all levels, I did my first race and I won the race. And on that day, I'm always too optimistic and uh, uh, too positive because the day at 16 when I won this uh, race on a 50cc, I saw all the stars, superstars riding 350s and which was uh, the thoroughbred racing, you know. So I, I thought, no, my next race should be a thoroughbred 350 and I have to compete with all the superstars in Sri Lanka. And at that age, I thought, yes, I can beat all of them. So I had that courage. As I told you, I'm always too optimistic. But I knew my father would never buy a bike for me. So my greatest two supporters is my two sisters. And I told them, please get Apache to buy me a 350. So they were very good at it. And at the age of 16, they worried and persuaded my father. And he bought me a 350. And he knew I could, I could hardly handle it. You know? And then he said, if you have one accident, you are never going to race again. So I said, okay. And uh, the same year, there was a race in Kurunagal and in, in front of the home crowd, I wanted to win. And the first time from a 50cc to a 350cc. And I was third in the first event. And the second event, I didn't have patience. Sometimes you need patience, you know. I didn't have patience. I wanted to beat the guy who was leading the race. And I tried to overtake him from the outside, which normally people don't do. And I had a big crash and I broke my leg. And my father said, that's all. You're not going to race again. And... Uh, but it never stopped. Uh, I used to sneak the bike and race. And then at the age of 18, I saw uh, a paper article uh, uh, calling for applications for riders to represent Sri Lanka in India. That was in 1983. So uh, I applied for this and then uh, my application was turned down and I never give up in life. So I wrote to this Madras Motorsports Club and said, I have the qualifications, I want to come and race, can you please give me entry? They said, uh, we cannot give you an official entry, but we can give you a private entry. But the only thing is, you have to find your own expenses to come to India. So, anyway, uh, uh, I, I found a way to go to India, spending a little bit of money. And that was from Kurunagal to take a train to Thalaimana, from there to take a ferry to Rameshwaram, and then another train from Rameshwaram to Madras to do the race. So somehow I spoke to my grandmother, didn't tell her I'm going to India, got some money. I, I got everything done. I mean, you had to get a car, you had to get the visas. So at that age, I could do it because the passion I had, you know. And then I went for the race. And the first race in Madras, the Sri Lankan so-called officials didn't allow me to ride. They said, you are a private rider. And they told the Madras Motorsports Club, if you allow him to ride, we will not ever send official riders from Sri Lanka. The only reason being is, they knew that the official two riders will be beaten by me. So they didn't let me do it. So I was really upset and I was crying, you know. And this gentleman, 
Uh, his name was S.C. Amarasiri, he was a racing driver. He came to me and asked me, why are you crying? So I told him the story. Then he took me to Calcutta Motorsports Club president who also came to Madras to see this race and they said, there's another race in Calcutta and then uh, they gave me a private train. The same thing they said, but you have to spend your money and come to Calcutta. So we had to take the slowest train, sold my watch, sold some of my shoes and uh, we took a slow train. We took about almost two, three days to go to Calcutta and I went there and I did my first race and as I said, I beat the official two riders and I was able to finish, finish sixth in the race. And at this race, I was the youngest, I had the oldest bike and there were riders from all over the world and no one, I mean, gave attention to me because I was no one. But this rider from Japan, who was the Japanese champion at that time, Matsumoto came in, he came to me and he was asking me, why are you taking this, bringing this old bike to race against us? I said, I don't care, this is what I have and I have time. So I said, someday I'm going to beat you, you know. And said, Some, someday we will race and I will beat you somewhere. And I said, I want to become a world champion. So he never thought it will happen. And uh, then he told me, okay, uh, so how are you going to do it? So I didn't know anything about Japan. So I said, either I'm going to US or I'm going to Europe and I'm going to become a world champion. Then he said, Dilanta, the best place for motorcycle riding is Japan and you should come and start racing in Japan. Uh, I think he was not serious, but he told me, I said, if I come to Japan, will you support me? He said, of course, yes, and he gave me his address, which I lost on the way coming from Calcutta to Madras, because my father came to know I was in Calcutta, he came there and he dragged me back. So anyway, when I came back to Sri Lanka, I told my father, I don't want to study, I want to go to Japan. He said, no, you have to study. So I had to do automobile engineering and my thought was always, my wish, my thought, my passion was to become a world champion and to go to Japan as soon as possible. So he, he didn't agree and one fine day I sold my car to a friend of mine. I took, uh, he gave me 10,000 rupees and one way ticket was 7,000 and I had another 1,000 rupees and the Sri Lankan currency was good at that time, not like these days. And then I had so 40,000 yen and I ran away from home to Japan. And uh, the life there was not easy so I didn't have a place to live. I lived in a van, I had a meal a day but the thing is, I have never felt sad, I have never felt bad, or I, I have never felt lonely. Because every day I wake up, even living in a van, I wake up and think, when am I going to race? When am I become, going to become a world champion? So I tried to find Matsumoto and I went to a circuit few times, but I was not allowed to go to him because he was a Japanese national champion and then without a, I mean, a pit pass, you cannot get into the pits. So I went few times and I thought, no, never mind. Someday I will meet him and, and then uh, I started racing. In, it took me two years to find, collect money to buy my first bike and I started racing from 1987. And my first race uh, was in a circuit called Scuba. And you know, I was very confident because I thought, because I've won many races in Sri Lanka, I thought I can be, beat everyone in Japan. And even at the first race, so they were also very inquisitive and they, they were thinking that someone has spread the message saying, the Sri Lankan champion is here. So I have no discrimination now. I have nothing against Japan, but Japan thinks they are the superior in Asia. So they will, I'm, but I was last in the race. So then when, after the race, there were some Japanese who came to me and said, you're from Sri Lanka. I said, yes. So I, he, they said to me, no way you can beat us. You have elephants in Sri Lanka, so they said you should be and raise elephants. So I thought it's an insult for Sri Lanka and I thought, you no, know, one day all of you will respect Sri Lanka and uh, you will bow down to us. So uh, from that day onwards, I had this big flag on the motorcycle uh, with a big flag saying visit Sri Lanka. And it took many years, but then I started winning races. And in 1994, I became the first non-Japanese Asian to ever win a championship in Japan. And that day, all these Japanese had to take off their hats for our national anthem. So, uh, then uh, I was winning everything and in 1997, I became the first non-Japanese agent to go to the highest level of racing. And on that year, uh, the late uh, uh, Obuchi, who was the Prime Minister at the time, felicitated me. He gave me a special award. So, during that award ceremony, uh, the National Japanese Television uh, they did a doc they, they came to me and they spoke to me and they said, we want to do your documentary. Actually, uh, motorsports is very glamorous sport, you know, so everyone 
comes in the flashcards, you have all these trucks, containers, they have everything, you know, uh, cheering girls and we, we had nothing, you know. I used to go with two of my friends and every time what they said to me is, Dilan, you are crazy. How are you going to compete with these rich people? They are very powerful, they are very… they have every resource, you have nothing. So I said, what? Why can't I do it? You know, I said, no, I'm going to do it. And we did it. So we won everything. So at that day, so the NHK wanted to do my documentary and first I said no, for the reason is, I should do… Uh, I used to export cars and motorcycles from Japan to find my expenses to do racing and I didn't want anyone to see how hard I worked. I worked twenty-two hours a day loading motorcycles, bringing, you know, I was the manager, I was the transport, I was the typist, I was the clerk, I was everything. So I didn't want that others to see. But then I can still remember the NHK director came to me and said, Dilanta, you were inspired by a film. There's a lot of foreigners commenting into this country also for these young Japanese. If they see the way how you achieved this, they would really love to see it. So I said, okay. And they did my documentary and the last shooting of the day, uh, they said, Dilanta, thank you very much, three months we have done your documentary and this is the last scene and uh, please uh, wait for another five minutes. I said, okay. And then the camera starts and who comes to my pit is Matsumoto Kemi. So I'm seeing him after fourteen years. So when he saw me, I mean, the NHK didn't tell me but they told him that I was in, in Japan and I was winning races and I was doing Formula Nippon. So he came to me and we were both very emotional. He came and held me and he was crying, you know. And uh, he asked me, the first thing he asked me is, Dilanta, how did you do this? You told me one day in 1983 and this is in 1997, 14 years ago, that you are going to become a champion and you are going to beat me and you, are go you have become popular than me. So I told him, honestly, I don't know how I did it because I lived every second of my life with my dream. It was not like I was forcing myself to do anything, but I had a vision. I couldn't plan anything because, you know, like I started with nothing. There was… I couldn't even think of a plan because I had nothing. So I had to work, I had to work and I had a vision and that became a mission, you know. So anyway, I could do all that and then I started winning championships all over the world and uh, all the Asian records, I did everything. And in 2009, I just… I was just thinking that I'm still missing something, you know, and that was I've been controlled by others because until 2009, I was driving for different teams. So when they control you, you can't give your best performance because one side of your mind, sometimes you want to do something but your team principal says, no, you can't do it, don't overtake or you have to back off. So this I didn't like because when you are controlled, you can't give you hundred percent of your performance. So I started my own racing team called uh, Dilango Racing from 2009 and until today. So I still use Dilango Racing and that's the time we won most of the races and most of the championship. And you know, uh, the thing is, so still I carry the Sri Lankan flag. You know, when you do something for yourself, it's not a sacrifice. But if you do something for your others, maybe for your university, maybe for your country, it becomes a sacrifice. So I was so happy because every time when I see the Sri Lankan flag coming up and when I hear our national anthem, I'm so proud, I'm so happy. I didn't do anything to get fame, I didn't do anything to get uh, awards or being felicitated. I did all this for my personal views and then I did it for my uh, own happiness, you know. So when you do something like that, it's totally different, you know, you are not forcing yourself to do anything because at the end of the day, it's… people will say you are successful, so that's, uh, you know, someone else says. But for yourself, you have to be happy, you know, so you have to be satisfied with what you did. So, I was very happy to do all this because I had this always wanted to do something for Sri Lanka. At the same time, I, I never forgot that my mother's wish was for me to become a doctor to help others. So I couldn't become a doctor, so what I did was whatever the small money I collected, I started doing a lot of charity work in Sri Lanka, like the Little Hearts, because I, I think what my mother told me is one of the best things in life you can do because end of the day, what we save is what we give, not what we keep. And you know, we are born in, in a country uh, that 
I mean, I've been traveling all over the world. I will never find a country like Sri Lanka. And you will never find good people as Sri Lankans. People say Sri Lanka is a third world poor country, which is totally wrong. We pay three times more than what the rich people pay for their cars. We pay the biggest interest rate in other countries, the so-called rich countries, they pay 3%, 4%, we pay 20%. So who do you think we are? You think we are a third world poor country? No, we are not. So you have to always be proud of become, being a Sri Lankan. And their dreams are limitless. We limit our dreams because we all want to live in a comfortable zone. So you should not think like that. If I could do it, all of you all can do it, you know. There's nothing impossible in life. It's all our thought. So I just want to tell you all, you know, you all will be very soon in the… you'll be… maybe sometimes you might work for a private sector, maybe for the public sector, but do the best for this country, you know, because you all can change it, I think. Uh, some of us or some people don't like the social media, but there's good things of social media. Don't be ever controlled with a device, you know. I think nowadays I see that everyone is controlled by a device, a phone, you know. You get addicted to it. I don't know why. So I have told my daughters when I'm at home, please keep away your phones, you know, because you should not be controlled by a small device. There's so much of things you can do in life, you know, and then your scope becomes very short because you're just looking at a device and you are looking at someone else's dreams. So what someone else… You don't need a role model. You have to be who you are. Be what you are and take me as an example, you can do things, you know, like as I told you, we used to compete with the richest and the most powerful companies in the world and I could beat them because the only thing is the commitment, is the courage and the passion. So we need more Sri Lankans to be like me or even there are better people than me, the cricket team, Susantika, Damayanti, you know, got a few illusion. So they all do. Because we all do for things for our self-satisfaction, not to gain anything else. Because end of the day, what we need is our self-satisfaction. So, I'm sure you all can uh, learn something from my speech and uh, I think all of you are blessed to be here. And one more thing before I finish my speech, I want to tell you, in our life, the ones that… who will love us most is our parents. You will never get that love again. And you all are here today because of your parents. So have gratitude and look after your parents, you know. Someday you will know it when you have a child. So I have seen nowadays people don't respect their parents much, you know. But this love you will never ever get because I'm 55 years old and I'm telling you, still I love my mother, still she's my best friend. I still hold hands with her, take her to the hospital. So you all should have respect. Same to your uh, teachers and the lecturers, you know, because they guide you. And in life you can do anything but you are you have to have good discipline, you know. Without good discipline, there are a lot of people, athletes um, and in different uh, areas where they are doing very well, but because their attitude is not good and their discipline is not good, they fail out a lot of things and they can't uh, sustain. So discipline, gratitude is very, very important in life and please have love for your parents more than you do right now and because they they didn't see, they didn't… they do for things for you all, they couldn't even dream of, you know, sent into a uh, good university as like this. So you should be have gratitude to your parents, please love them and also please love this country and hope you all can build this country and take it to a different level. Thank you very much. Sri Lanka, NSBM. Sambhavaniya Pranamya Pirinama Navasthava In the other words, this is the first thing that we have seen in the past. This is Acharya E.A. Birasingha Shurata Palinga Dirhasta Hatra Varshwedi Jagwanekar Emerald Fighters Nivase Nila Kabai Saha Dirhasta Hatra Varshwedi Jagwanekar Rubi Adventures Nivase Nila Kabai Emerald Fighters Nivase This is the first thing that we have seen in the past. ऐसे राम उबसिल दिन आदरे मिस्सूबी ऐसे राम उबत उबे मावट टपियाट आदरे करन उबे राटट आदरे करन उबत